Hello everyone, this is Ultimate Academy Steam presenting the series Onyx Financial Track. Uh, this is going to be lecture number 6 and our topic for this lecture is going to be General Ledger Setup. We'll start with General Ledger Parameter Screen. So through this screen we can set up all kinds of variables that are related to the accounts. In this screen we don't have an add button because clearly we're not adding anything new here. We can modify the existing variables according to uh, the company's financial policy and management, of course. So, decimal points uh, field is where you can define the number of decimal digits that will show up in the transactions and the reports as well. Everything that's related to the account system. Connect account with guarantees. Guarantees here means... Um, bank guarantees or any kind of guarantees in general which the company takes from employees or others in the drop down menu we have the choices optional not use and mandatory so not use means that you will not use this variable in other words you will not connect the guarantees with the accounts optional means you have the choice whether to link the guarantees with the accounts or if you'd prefer not Mandatory, of course, means that it's absolutely necessary and it's going to be mandatory to um, connect the guarantees with the relevant accounts to see the impact of these guarantees on the accounts themselves. Alright, so um, the next field is posting default index in account statement. Sounds complicated, we'll explain what that means. It's basically for how the user views the account statements based on choices in the drop down menu balance before posting, balance after posting, or all. Insert pay from payroll system is for the internal process of payroll, whether it's going to be in payment document or uh, a payment request. So to emphasize that a little bit more, in the company's HR department, they basically generate or prepare the documentation to release the salaries or payroll and these documents are processed through the finance department so this field gives you two options for how finance is going to process the payroll basically either that they will receive a payment document which means they will just directly release the payroll or a payment request which means that it has to be reviewed approved and then released Moving on to the next field, insert receipt from payroll system. It's pretty much the same idea as the previous field. Um, however, this one is for deductions. The choices in the drop down menu are also receive document or receive request. Now, um, let's talk about payroll accrual in the variable inserts of forms from payroll. Uh, it contains two choices, journal document or journal document request. We've already explained what uh, these choices mean. Journal document does not need any reviewing, only posting. However, add journal document request needs reviewing, approval, and then uh, posting afterwards. So date generation means the date of the transaction. In the drop down menu, we have three choices. System generated modifiable means that the system will automatically create the date of the transaction. It will set it to the day the transaction was made. Uh, manual, however, means that the system allows manual date entry. System generated not modifiable means that the system will generate the date, but it will allow modifications. Moving on to document sequence. It's for the sequence of the transactions, the same three choices as the previous field for the date. Journal's request sequence is the sequence for journal request transactions and it can be sorted by type or accumulated. Payment request sequence and receipts request sequence can be sorted also by accumulated, which means that it will be in the right sequence or order, but modifications are allowed. Uh, and payment sequence means that it will also be in the right order according to which transaction was made first, but this option means that the system will not allow modification. Uh, by payment method or by type, in case we divided uh, the payment documents into types, the system will arrange the payment document of each type separately. Journal sequence, in the drop-down menu we have two options. So by type, 
which means that the system will sort or arrange the journals of each type separately. And the second choice is by period, uh, period and type, which means that the system will give each type an ordinal number, but by the end of each month, it will restart the ordinal number again. Uh, the ordinal numbers, I'm sorry, again. Um, number of additional fields and documents is the number of the additional fields that the system will add in the transactions. And the variable show the collector number in the transaction. When we check this variable, the system adds a field in the transactions called the collector number. Show the representative code in transaction. This also adds another field in the, in the transaction for the representative's code. Collector mandatory in receipt voucher. When you activate this variable, we will not be able to save the receipt document unless we um, record the collector's number. The next variable is representative code mandatory in receipt documents. We will not be able to save, to save the receipt document basically unless we record the representative's code. Check linking customer with ID representative ID in transaction. Um, this means that by activating this variable, if you're making a receipt transaction from a specific client, the system will only show the representatives who are linked uh, to that client already. Check link the sales rep with cash. If we're making a receipt transaction from a specific rep or representative, the system will show the cash saves linked to this representative. Uh, the one after that is fill sales rep which related to customer in receipt voucher. This variable is for linking the customer with the representative. When you choose a specific client in the transactions, the system will link the client with the representative. Moving on to fixing data, uh, it basically means that you can fix the main data in all the transactions screen and use standby. Um, if you activate this variable, a new box comes up in the transaction screen that gives the user the ability to basically put any transaction on standby, which means that the transaction does not affect the account. Show beneficiary branch number. Upon checking this checkbox, a new field appears for the beneficiary branch in the, in the transaction screen and using this field in the transaction screen affects the beneficiary branch accounts, not the branch that actually makes the transactions. Insert multi-orders in journal voucher. If you use this variable, the system gives the user the option to add multiple journal voucher requests in the same journal voucher. Allowed to use delete document number is pretty much self-explanatory. Um, that pretty much covers everything for this tab. We'll move on to the second tab we have in the screen, which is advanced options. We can see that we have like a lot of options here or a lot of variables. So first we have limit types drop down menu. And the first choice we have is not use and we already know what that stamp stands for or what it actually does. Then we have account code, which means that the user can set limits according to the accounts code. Cost center code, same idea, but instead of using the accounts code, we'll use the cost centers code. Account and cost center code, we'll use both, so we can set the limit according to the account and the cost center code uh, altogether. The remaining two options are of the same nature as the previous ones, but the combination here is project number or account number and project number altogether. So receipts, PDS, um, posting, PD, I'm sorry, PDC. <laughs> PDC stands for post document check. And this option we have here, um, the options that we have here are all, which means that the system will use post for all document checks. Voucher date, um, here we'll uh, post based on the voucher's date due date, posting based on the due date that the user has set in the transaction. Interface direct means that we use the interface account which is called interface direct. Interface indirect, the system will give the user the option to post manually according to um, the due date. The next variable is payment PDC, posting, same concept and same options um, as the previous variable. 
Now we'll move on to the checkboxes that we have. Uh, they're quite many. Use estimated budget by currency. Now, if you activate this variable or um, check the box, the system will enter different currencies in the estimated budget. Check budget balance in transactions. If you activate this variable, the system will add a field in the transaction screen which contains the value of the budget. Use balance sheet accounts in estimated budget. Checking this one or checking this box will just basically does what's written next to it, but specifically from the previous balance sheet. Use limits for multi-currency accounts is also self-explanatory. And then allow to repeat check number in payment. So this variable will give you the option to use the same check number in the same transaction. Use promissory notes. Uh, checking it enables that option basically. And then allow record currency exchange rate adjustment in JR or journal voucher. If you check this option, the system will add a checkbox in the journal voucher screen that will give the user the option to make exchange rate adjustments. Use cash account in journal voucher. Checking it enables that option as well. Install more than one note in journal voucher. This one means that we can close more than one note in the same voucher. However, if you do not enable this option, the system will allow you to close only one note in the same voucher. Check cash connected with the branch. Here the system will allow us to check all safes, uh, all the safes that are linked to the same branch. Allow save zero voucher checkbox if you, um, if you check that box basically you'd like enable saving zero voucher. Mandatory determined voucher type, mandatory determined reference number. Enter description mandatory. By activating all of these three variables, the user will not be able to save the transactions unless he enters these three pieces of data or information. Moving on to the next one is profit and loss closing type. It is either monthly or annually by year. And then currency exchange rate difference closing type, either daily or monthly not close currency exchange rate difference in profit and loss so closing the exchange rate difference is normally performed in the profit and loss but if we activate this variable it will close the exchange rate or it will close all of the exchange rates uh, differences in the relevant m module so for example the exchange rate difference for purchases will be used in decreasing the cost if we activate this variable Effect check payments uh, in accounts payable and receivable. So when we use these uh, two variables, the payment and receipt checks affect the balance of the vendors and the customers accounts. Include cost center name in the description and include project name in the description. These two variables uh, basically will make the system automatically add the name of the cost center and the project in the description field. Manual input local amount for foreign amount. If you check this box, you enable this option to be manually used, of course. Use check number in journal voucher is self-explanatory. And then allow connect more than one cash with one account and allow connect more than one bank with one account. Both of them mean that if we activate these two variables, we'll use a single account for saves and a single account for banks in the chart of accounts and we link it to banks or saves through the accounting module. Use interface bank in journal voucher. So activating this variable um, will make the system add a field for the interface bank in the journal voucher screen and that means that the actual bank account will not be affected. Cost center parent not included in cost center code. We explained this one in the system parameter screen. Uh, the one after that is use multi-debit account and receipt voucher and also use multi-credit account in payment voucher. The system will allow the user to add more than one debit account or more than one credit account in the payment and receipt transactions. 
All right, so this basically concludes today's lecture. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, please do not forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and we'll see you again in the upcoming lecture. Thank you for listening.